Well, Chocolatito is without a doubt one of the one of the great fighters of, of today. He had a great comeback. And uh, please tell us about uh, why you are here and what you just presented to, to, to him. Well, you, you spoke about a comeback. He was Ring Magazine's 2020 Comeback of the Year award winner. And um, with mo as with most comebacks, it, it doesn't just happen with one fight. That's one way to look at it. In 2020, um, in February of that year, he beat undefeated Cal U5 for the WBA 115-pound title. Um, but his performance in, in, in the ring at that time against a, a, a bigger, uh, undefeated, um, many would say like a fresher fighter, he didn't have a lot of wear and tear on him, and a very confident fighter from, from Britain, from a fighting family. Um, and there was a lot of folks who didn't think Chocolatito could do it, um, and the reason he was able to do it was because it wasn't just one training camp. It was several training camps, you know, over a few years. And, and the, the thing you have to remember about Chocolatito was that in, in 2017, people thought he was done. He had the two fights with Sri Saketsu Rungvisai. And whether they knew about what was going on in his life or what was going on in his heart, in his spirit, that, that didn't matter, you know, and you, you know, boxing can be very negative and, and fans can be very divided um, and antagonistic and not nice. And um, there were some things, some not nice things said about Chocolatito, whether or not he was going to continue his career or not. And he made it, made it made up in his mind that he was going to continue. And from that point on, the jury was out on whether or not he could be successful. And he came back in 2018 uh, and fought on the undercard of the Canelo Triple G rematch. It was a very big stage. And um, he got the job done against a fighter who was not like a top 10 contender. So the jury is still out. And then there were some um, training injuries that kept him out of the ring for a long time. And he, he wouldn't step back into the ring until late 2019 in Japan. And nobody in America is paying attention to that, you know. So it's like he disappears, you know. And, and, and you know, so going into the Cal U5 fight, there's a lot of unanswered questions. And um, he answered those questions. But with all that he's accomplished, you know, he's got more than 50 fights. Mm -hmm. He has 51 victories right now, only three losses. And most of us believe that, Two of those losses, he should have won the decision. Um, so it's like every time he steps into the ring, um, it's, it's something special. Because I think with the Cal Yafai fight, people really began to recognize this is a very special fighter. Because he's been world class for more than 10 years. And he's been a champion in four weight classes. He's been the number one fighter in those four weight classes. And I think over time, people have, have come to appreciate that He's not just winning titles in these weight classes, he's defending the titles in these weight classes against the best fighters in these weight classes. And maybe, the, you know, the super flyweight, junior bantamweight, you know, maybe that's a step too far, really, physically speaking, you know, like um, a lot of these fighters, a lot of these guys he's fighting, they could be fighting at bantamweight or even junior featherweight. Mm -hmm. And he can not only compete with them, he can conquer them because of his spirit and his will and his intelligence and his craft. And, and the way he goes about his craft sort of adds to his mystique because when you're a pressure fighter and you're a volume puncher and, and you're an inside specialist, a master of infighting, generally speaking, those fighters at the elite level, they don't last that long. They might have a good five or six year period when you think of the great pressure fighters, you know, yeah. or you think of, you know, somebody, you know, like, like, like Joe Frazier, you know, great fighter, great, you know, one of the all time great heavyweight champions. But uh, I don't even think he had 35 fights, you know, he didn't, I didn't have 40 fights, you know, and, and maybe after 30 fights, really, he was after that great fight with Muhammad Ali, the first one, he lost a step. 
And certainly after the, the rematch and the rubber match, I was, after the rubber match for Thriller and Manila, mm -hmm. he's done. Yeah. And it wasn't a surprise for, for boxing people. They knew, like, when you fight like that, you don't last long. And Chocolatito was lasting the way a Bernard Hopkins or a Floyd Mayweather or a, a James Tony is lasting. You know, James Tony and Bernard Hopkins at age 35, they were still world class. They were still champions. Um, they were on that mythical pound for pound list. But they were boxers. You know, if they were aggressive in their youth, they had to, ch they had to change their game a little bit to be a little more ring savvy, a little more careful. And uh, Chocolatito, this past Saturday in, in San Diego against a strong young Mexican champion, the number one rated flyweight, Julio Cesar Martinez, he exhibited the exact same form he exhibited as a strawweight. And I even went back and watched, the first time I heard of him is when he, his first fight in Japan. Because mm -hmm. Taken Promotions mailed me either a CD or a, a VHS tape. <laughs> this is in 2007. And he fought a tough Filipino fighter who had just challenged for the, one of the, the world titles at 105 pounds. And he fought a Japanese champion and it took him 12 rounds. Mm -hmm. And Chocolatito took him out in one minute in the first round. And I'm watching his form against this tough Filipino. It's the same form that he has today at 115 pounds at age 34. This is very rare in boxing. Yeah, it's so I, yeah. it's, it's not just a comeback, it's like a, you know, what did, what did LL Cool J say? Don't call it a comeback. I've been here for years. He's been here for years. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. But it is kind of a comeback in terms of his recognition in the boxing world. It seems like everybody, like, okay, we, we, if we didn't recognize in 2015 and 2016 when he's fighting on HBO, now we recognize it. Now we, we realize this is, the, what's happening is something special and what we're seeing is something special. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I meant come back because, as he said, I mean, he, he said it himself. Yes. After his loss, he thought that was that was the end of the sure. of his uh, period. Most people but, thought that. And everybody, everybody, you know, everybody sees this as in, in that sort, sort and, of... And had he walked away from the sport, in my opinion at least, he's still a first ballot Hall of Famer. Mm -hmm. as, soon as, as soon as he's retired for three or five years and his name appears on the, the International Boxing Hall of Fame ballot, mm -hmm. he gets a check mark from me. Oh, yeah. But I think a lot of people would have, you know, he could have maybe got in had he retired. Like, he'd be in the Hall of Fame right now mm -hmm. had he retired at the end of 2017. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, now, certainly. Now, nobody can disagree. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. yes, without a doubt, yeah. Alguna pregunta, Nancy? Just, uh, what kind of legacy is he going to leave in, in the sport of boxing? Or look he, at the camera. His legacy... He has a lot of legacies. Mm -hmm. he's, he's one of the greatest Central American fighters of all time. Um, he's right there with his mentor, the late great Alexis Arguello, as the greatest Nicaraguan fighter mm -hmm. of all time, which is saying something because there is some boxing history with that, with that nation. Mm -hmm. um, he's arguably, he's right there with um, uh, Ricardo Finito Lopez as the greatest straw weight mm -hmm. of all time. Um, you have to consider him one of the, just the greatest, you know, sub bantamweight, sub featherweight, lighter weight fighters. He's right there with Finito Lopez, and Ivan Calderon, and Chiquita Gonzalez, and Michael Carbajal, mm -hmm. and Jorge Arce. Yeah. When you think of the fighters who are great at junior flyweight and flyweight, he's right there with them. He's right there with them. And if you probably, um, like on Twitter right now, if you, if, you ha if you put up a poll and said, who's the greatest, you know, lighter weight fighter, and you put Chocolatito's name right there with Finito, and Travieso, and Chiquita, and Little Hands of Stone, uh, Carbajal, he, he might win, you know? He might have like whatever, you know, 55% of the vote, you know what I mean? It wouldn't shock me. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm not gonna say, he's very, he's humble. You know, he's, very, he's, a, he's a very humble man and a humble champion. Um, so he would never say, yeah, I, <laughs> put me on top, you know? So I won't say that, I'll, but I'll say he's, he's done enough and what, that's his legacy. He's, 
he's um, he's on Mount Rushmore. He's on Mount Olympus mm -hmm. with those fighters, mm -hmm. you know, who are all in the Hall of Fame. If they're not in the Hall of Fame, they're going to be in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Yeah.